A smile spread across the prince's face when he heard the news from Sinapati Buddha Vikaramaksari. At last it seems that the struggle of my soul has come to an end, he said in a soft voice as if he were talking to himself. Parthibendra was furious. Senate Hapati. What did you say? Is this true? Why didn't you tell me until now? Isn't it obvious now that you brought this Pithakulai girl with us? I ask again, is it true that the Palyavatarayas have sent ships to capture the prince? He asked. Yes, sir. If we are to believe what this woman has seen with her eyes and heard with her ears, it is true. Aga. What the old man, Tirakovalar Malajadayar, said was true. He was the one who felt the Palyavatarayas as they were. Sinadipati. Why are you so idle even after hearing such news? Selvare, Aditha, the descendant of Emperor Parintaka, the wealthy son of Sundara Chola, the prince admired by the whole country, the people of Tamil Nadu consider him the apple of their eye. Aromas Hivarmara, who was born with Kari Kalar, is it time to send men to imprison these petty Palyavatarayas? What is the next idea? Let us immediately go with the troops and destroy those who came to imprison the prince and erect a mausoleum for them on this very island of Ceylon. Then we will conduct the matter according to our plan. Go. Why are you still hesitant? Parthapendran said and fried it. Senate Hapati Bhutavikramaksari looked at him and said, Parthapendra. I didn't tell you about the Sethi brought by this woman earlier because I thought you would be so excited. It's something that needs to be done carefully. There's no use in hurrying. Said. To think? What idea? What idea? Prince. Tell me. What is there to think now? If they had any hesitation before, there is no more room for hesitation? To destroy the scumbags. Then the prince said, May we know what is in the mind of the general? Sir. What do you want us to think about? He asked calmly without any panic. To imprison themselves, my mouth itches even to say these words but it must be said. What shall we do if we have come with the orders of the emperor of those who have come to imprison themselves? Still fight against them. Hearing this, Parthapendra laughed heartily and said, What a beautiful word! Is the emperor in a position to issue orders on his own? He is the one the Pula Vetareas have kept in prison. He said. At this point Vandiyadeva interrupted and said, what the Pallava commander is saying is absolutely true. I have seen it with my own eyes. The Palyavatarayas keep the emperor like a prison. No one can see the emperor without their consent, no one can speak. If I think of the punishment they put on me for daring to say a word. Father. Little one. I still ache in the place of the reaper's iron fist. He said and stroked his wrist. Say so, mighty man. I thought you were something. Tell the prince and the general well once more. Said Parthapendra. The prince said, No, he has said all he had to say. Saying this, he looked at Vandiyathevan and said, Sir. You said you were going to fetch that girl. Why are you standing here? You can listen to her verbally in detail about the message she brought. She looks like a bit of a squeamish girl. Say a good word and bring her here. Said. I will go, Prince. I will go and fetch you. I cannot bear to be held captive by the scoundrels. It will not be done while I have life in me. Saying that, Vandiyathevan left. The general did not say what they thought. Asked Aromas Hivarman. This is my opinion. You should not meet the men sent by the Palyavatarayas. Board the ship that Parthibendra has brought and go to Kanchi at once. I am going to Tanjavur. There I will see the emperor in person and find out the true situation. Going to Tanjavur is like putting your head in a lion's mouth. If you go, you will never come back. You will end up in the dungeon there. You will not be able to see the emperor. What are you saying? Who is there in the Chola kingdom who is strong enough to imprison me? Who is there who is manly enough to prevent me from meeting the emperor? And there is the prime minister, Anirutha Brahmaraya. 
there is Brahmaraya. What is the use of being there? He himself cannot see the emperor. Here stands his disciple, may I ask what he says? The general turned to Alwarkadian and said, Yes, I had forgotten that this Vaishnava was standing here. Tirumala. Why are you standing so silent? Have you also become mute as the prince said a while ago? Said. Sinadipati. God has given us two ears and only one mouth. Therefore, my Guru Nath has told me to use your ears well and keep your talking to a minimum. Mainly, he has told me to observe that fast strictly where there are talks about great royal matters. You are fulfilling the Guru's promise well. Tell us now that we are asking. What is your idea? What are you asking for my opinion on, Commander? This is the matter that has been talked about for so long. What should the prince do now? Should he stay in Sri Lanka? Or should he go to Kanchi? Shall I speak my true opinion? If the prince permits. Aromas Hivarmar, deep in thought, looked up at Alwarkadian and said, Say Thirumalai, give up your mind generously. He encouraged that. Which is the most heavily guarded prison on the island of Sri Lanka? Find it and lock up the prince inside. The outside must be heavily guarded. What the hell is this? Said the commander. Is it time to play? Said Parthapendra. I didn't fool around, I didn't play. I said what was on my mind. Last night the prince was walking through the streets of Anuradhapura. The facade of a house collapsed on his head. Then we were lying in a house. Fortunately, we got up for something. The fire was burning. Ask the prince himself whether all this is true or not. Both looked at the prince. His expression confirmed all Alwarkadian's statement. Ask for whom all these dangers have been incurred. Will someone set fire to the house to kill me or Vandiyadeva? Parthivendra immediately jumps up and says someone tried to kill the prince. This confirms the need for the prince to come with me to Kanchi. He said. Not at all. Rather than sending the prince with them, let them capture and hand over to the robbers, said Alvar Kadian. Vaishnava. What did you say? Parthapendra drew his knife. Senate Hapati took him by the hand and said, Thirumalai. Why do you say that? Don't you know that Parthibendra Palavar is a patron of the Chola clan? He asked. I know, Commander, I know. Is friendship enough? I know that Parthapendra is willing to give his life for friendship, Thirumalai. That may be. But I ask a question. Tell me to answer it. When we were going near Tampala yesterday evening we saw two men coming with him. Ask him who those men are and where they are now. Parthapendra Paul Avan was a little startled. He said with some hesitation, I met them on the Trigana Hill. They came to show me the whereabouts of the prince. They suddenly disappeared at Anuradhapura. Why do you ask, Vaishnava? Do you know anything about them? I know. I know they are two of those who have vowed to wipe out the Chola clan. I guess they were the ones who tried to kill the prince in Anuradhapura yesterday. Aha! Uh -huh. Look at that, Alwarkadian pointed out. The place he pointed to was a little far from the hall. A beautiful young woman and a young man were talking between the trees that were close by. It was possible to infer that Vandiyadeva was also a flower potter. Vandiyathevan, who was talking, suddenly swung a small knife and threw it. The knife fell into a bush. Will said a voice. 